the topic for this session is your partnership formation. Before we proceed in accounting for partnership formation, we need to learn again the life cycle of a partnership business. So what are the uh, cycles in the life of the partnership? So first, we have your partnership formation. So in partnership formation, the uh, partnership business is formed by your partners. So what you need to take into account here is if ever the formation if ever the formation is created by individuals alone or you have your sole proprietors plus individuals or sole proprietor alone, okay? So we need to learn how to form a partnership by individuals alone, sole proprietor plus individuals and sole proprietor alone. Okay, so formation, the partnership now is formed. It is the start of the partnership business. Next, we have your partnership operation. So in partnership operation, your partnership starts now to do business or start operating. So since they are now operating, normally we have here your changes in the capital of your partnership due to your profit or loss, your investment, or your withdrawal. But generally, what we account in your partnership operation is the profit or loss. What we do is we try to compute for the amount of the profit or the loss, and we distribute it to the partners. Remember, in the definition of the partnership, that is to gain profit. That is to gain profit and divide them among themselves. So the profit or loss computed will now be divided among themselves. So how do we divide again? By their profit or loss ratio. But soon enough, we will learn what is a profit or loss ratio. Third, we have your dissolution. In your dissolution, there is now a change as to the relationship of the partners. So when we see there's a change as to the relationship of the partners, the partners will either reduce or there will be an increase. So there might be an increase on the partnership or a decrease in the partnership brought to you by, by the partners. So it means that there might be a partner who's going out of the partnership or a partner who's going into the partnership. So that's your dissolution. And we said that it's increase or decrease is brought by your debt, retirement, withdrawal, and admission. So when we talk about decrease, that is brought by debt, retirement, or withdrawal. So your partners decrease because of debt, retirement, and withdrawal. What is retirement? Oh, normally, there is a retirement. We, we use retirement, the word retirement, for those individuals who reach a certain age. And at that point of time or that particular age, they mandatorily retire. So guys, when we say retirement, please do not always associate it to a mandatory retirement, meaning yung age mismo. Kasi pag retirement, pwede rin gusto lang talaga mag-retire kahit bata pa siya. So it's either uh, voluntarily or mandatory. When we say mandatory, it is fixed by law or by their agreement. And uh, voluntarily, if any time he wants to retire. If you want to retire at the age of 40, that can be. Next, another mode to decrease the number of partners is your withdrawal. So when we say withdrawal, the partner goes out of the partnership. So he will now withdraw to the partnership. You don't want to associate himself already in the partnership. So you just associate yourself, withdrawal. Next, you have your admission. So in your admission, this results to the increase of partners. So when there is an admission, there will be a new partner coming into the partnership. And the last cycle, so the last item on the cycle of the life of the partnership business is your liquidation. 
So what is the difference of a dissolution and a liquidation? In a dissolution, there is only a change of the relationship of the partners. It does not mean termination of the partnership business. So it means, pwedeng umalis yung isang partner, pero tuloy pa rin yung business. Nasundan? Pero sa liquidation, this happens if ever you want to terminate now the partnership business. So terminate the partnership business. And normally, what do we do in your liquidation? So what we do in your liquidation is that we, we try to sell the assets of the partnership. Sell the assets of the partnership. We call this the process of realization. And once we realize the assets, we pay the liabilities. And if there is a remainder, what do we do again? We distribute to the partners. Now, in case there is no remainder and the liabilities, uh, the amount of the realized asset is not enough to pay the liabilities, the partners again are liable to pay the amount necessary to the creditors or to your liabilities. We call that one your unlimited liability of the partners or the partnership, okay? Especially if you are a general partner, okay? So the set for your life cycle of your partnership, formation, operation, dissolution, and liquidation. In this particular session, we will focus ourselves in partnership formation, partnership formation. So what do we need to learn here in your partnership formation? How do we form if ever it is purely individuals? We have your sole proprietorship plus individuals or purely sole proprietorship, okay? So let's start. Now, we first learn how do we value the partnership contribution. So remember, in the definition of a partnership, uh, sabi natin, two or more persons bind themselves to contribute money, property, or industry, okay? So... Remember, sabi natin, two or more persons contribute money, property, or industry. Now, in your partnership formation, what we need to learn here is that we need to learn how to uh, value these contributions because we are just to form the partnership. And without these items or contribution, we cannot form the partnership. Okay, so we have your money, property, or industry. Take note, it can be money only, it can be property only, it can be industry only, or a combination of the three items. So money, property, or industry. So how do we value this contribution? So to value this contribution, how first we value it based on our agreement. Based on the agreement. If there is no agreement, how do we value it next? If there is no agreement, we value it based on the market value. We value it based on the market value. If there is no market value, what's next? Normally, we measure it now to your carrying amount. And lastly, if there is no carrying amount, we can measure it at your historical cost. But normally, this does not happen. Yung dalawa, yung sa huli. So if you value it, guys, ah, this is a hierarchy. You start first with agreement. Sir, what is an agreement? So when I say agreement, this is the agreed value of the agreed value of the investment or contribution. Okay? Right? It is the agreed value of the investment or contribution agreement. So if ever, guys, for example, uh, you will contribute a car, a brand new car. Let's say you purchase a brand new car for 1.3 million. You will contribute that to the partnership. Now, if the partners will agree that the value of the car will only be 1 million pesos, you use that 1 million pesos, okay? So based on the agreement, clear? Next, market value. Market value, this is the fair market value or the current value in the market. So whatever is the value of the property in the market, 
that is the market value. Normally, given naman yan sa problem. Sasabihin naman, the market value of the property is blah, blah, blah. Clear? Next. Carrying amount. Carrying amount is the amount of the property in the books of the partner. So, whatever is the amount of the property in the books of the partner, wherein it is recorded, that is the carrying amount. So, just like your... Uh, Property or depreciable property, di ba sabi natin kan, dati, your uh, value or purchase price, less the accumulated dep depreciation will give you your carrying amount. So, yun yung carrying amount. Yun yung amount on the books of the uh, partner or the investor. Next, you have your historical cost. That is the amount of your property when you purchase it historically normally this is the purchase price previously kaya nga sabi siya historical cost okay so how do we value first on your agreement if there is no agreement market value if no agreement no market value carrying amount okay so i hope we are clear here now after we know how to value it we go to your specific valuations Okay, a specific valuation of contribution. So what can we contribute again? We have money, we have property, and we have industry. So your money should be valued at face. Sir, what do we mean by at face value? Whatever is the amount of the money contributed, that is the amount that you will carry on the books. Sir, bakit naman? Sabi nga natin kanina agreement, you cannot agree the value of a money kasi yun, ang, yun at yun ang value niyan. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na yung 50 pesos ay worth 20 pesos lang. That cannot be. Okay? So it is based on the amount. Whatever is the face value of the money, that is the amount of your valuation for the money. Next, you have your property. How do we value your property? Dito na papasok yung rules natin sa valuation. You can value it based on this item. So it can be first agreement, then market value, then your recurring amount, then your historical cost. Okay? How about industry? How do we value your industry? How do we value your industry? Your industry is not valued. This is not valued. It is only recorded through memorandum entry. It is only recorded through memorandum entry. So how do we record the investment or the partner contribution? So to record the investment or partner contribution, we debit cash for the money. Then we credit the property. So please be specific with the property that was provided or invested. And then we credit the capital of the partner. So partner capital. So yan, ganyan siya. So how do we value the cash again? At face value. The property based on our rules, the agreement, market value, the carrying amount, and the historical cost. And then we have your partner capital. Take note, the carrying amount and the historical cost is not normally used because these items are normally given. Agreement and market value. Only in cases that your agreement and market value is not given, you can use the carrying amount. Only in cases that the agreement or market value is not given, you can use the carrying amount. Now, how do we account for your individuals and for your sole proprietor? So for your individuals, just value the amount of investment. And then account for the investment or contribution. So what do we need to do? We just value the amount of the investment using the rules we have discussed and then we account for the investment or contribution. How about if that is a sole proprietorship business? If that is a sole proprietorship business, what we do is we need first to adjust 
the accounts of the business? And then, after adjusting the accounts of the business, we either close, we either close the books of the sole proprietorship business, or we maintain, and then we account for the investment. Okay, so we value the amount of investment, no problem here. We already learned that. How about the adjust the accounts of the business? So here in your sole proprietorship business, what is invested is the whole sole proprietorship business, so the partnership. So kumbaga, we have your sole proprietorship business. It is now converted. So let's say the long sole proprietorship business. It is now converted into partnership. Now the question is, what is the investment of the sole proprietorship business? So whatever are the accounts in the sole proprietorship business, yun yung i-invest natin sa partnership. So kung anong laman man ng sole proprietorship, yun yung maipupunta sa partnership. So we need to adjust the accounts of the sole proprietorship business first. Sir, how do we adjust the accounts? We adjust the accounts based on the agreement of the partners, based on the agreement of the partners or the market value of the uh, properties of the sole proprietorship business. Okay? I hope we are clear here. And then, after that, we close the books of the sole proprietorship business or we maintain it. We maintain it. And then, we account for the investment. So, how do we close the books of the sole proprietorship business? By closing everything. Close the asset, close the liabilities, and close the equity. Ganun pagka close the books of the sole proprietorship business. Sir, why do we need to close the books of the sole proprietorship business? We need to close the books of the sole, proprietor, sole proprietorship business because we will not make use of that already. Magiging partnership na siya. So kailangan zero out mo lahat yung sa books ni sole proprietorship business. Third question. We only talk about the contribution of money, property, or industry. Can we also contribute liability? So for individuals to contribute liability... So for individuals to contribute liability, the liability must be expressly assumed by the partnership. When we say it is expressly assumed by the partnership, it means that there must be a, a statement in the problem there was a statement in the problem which provides that the liability is assumed by the partnership. Okay? Because here, guys, who owns the liability nung una? Si individual. Kung gusto mo siyang ilipat kay partnership, kailangan inassume ni partnership yung liability. Kailangan nakapangalan na sa kanya yung liability. Okay? Kaya bago natin makuha yung liability na i-contribute ni individual, kailangan inassume yun ni partnership. Next. So, proprietorship business, what if there is a liability? If there is a liability, if there is a liability, what we do is no need for express assumption. There is no need for express assumption because it was only converted into a partnership. So, no need for assumption. Okay? No need for assumption of the liability. Unlike in your individuals, it must be expressly assumed. So we already know how to value. We know this one. We already know how to adjust the accounts of the partnership business based on the valuation. Then our main problem now lies with the accounting for the investment or the contribution. So how do we account for the investment or contribution? So accounting for the investment. Or contribution. So to account for the investment or contribution, we have two methods. So what are those methods? First, we have your net investment method. And then we have your 
bonus method. Net investment method and bonus method. Okay. So, what are the differences of these two methods? So, first, on your net investment method and your bonus method. As to the amount of your uh, capital contribution and your agreed capital. Capital contribution and agreed capital. What is CC again? Capital contribution. AC is the agreed capital. Okay. So let's say after we value their investment, that is the amount of capital contribution. So the capital contribution is the valued investment or contribution. Agreed capital is the amount of capital Credited to the partners. Okay. So, as to your capital contribution and agreed capital. So, in your net investment method, your capital contribution is equal to your agreed capital. Your capital contribution is equal to your agreed capital. So, but in your bonus, your capital contribution is not equal to your agreed capital. Okay? So here, the partner contribution is equal to the agreed capital again. And your bonus, your partner contribution is not equal to your agreed capital. Okay? So here, in your net, in, net investment, we don't have any problem. Kasi kung ano naman yung in-invest, yun lang din naman yung i -re record natin. Pero sa bonus, may problema tayo. Kasi hindi na siya equal. But take note here, the total contributed capital is equal to your total agreed capital for your net investment. For your bonus, your total contributed capital will equal to your total agreed capital. Sir, ano naman ngayon yung total contributed capital? At ano naman yung total agreed capital? Kanina kasi, ang pinag-compare lang natin is yung partner contributed capital at saka yung partner agreed capital. So whether they are equal or not. Pag sinabi namang ating total contributed capital at saka total agreed capital, ito na lahat ng total amount of contributions. It is the total amount of contributions. So total contributed capital, total amount of contributions. And normally, that amount of contribution is the agreed capital. Okay? Total amount of contributions is the total agreed capital. Okay? So between net investment and bonus, your total contributed capital is equal to your total agreed capital. Pero sabi naman natin sa bonus, yung partner contributed capital is not equal to partner agreed capital. So anong mangyayari? Because there is a difference here on the partner contributed capital, but the total is still the same, there will be an increase or decrease to partner's contribution. Pag increase, ang tawag natin dyan ay bonus 2. Okay? Bonus 2. Pag decrease, ang tawag naman natin dyan ay bonus from. Bakit bonus 2? Bonus 2 kasi madadagdagan daw yung capital mo. Nagkaroon ka ng bonus. Kasi nga, halimbawa, ito lang yung contributed capital mo, 200,000. Pero ang agreed capital mo ay 220. Equal ba siya? Not equal. So kung ito yung capital contribution mo, ito yung agreed capital mo, anong mangyayari? Kailangan daw taasan yan. May bonus ka na 20,000 para mag-equal sila. Ayan, bonus 2, madadagdagan. Bonus from naman, pag mababawasan siya. Bonus from, pag mababawasan siya. Okay, again. Pag net investment method, wala tayong problema. Kung ano yung kanyang valuation of investment, yun na siya. Pero, pagka bonus method, meron tayong problema. Kailangan natin i-agree yung kanilang capital based on their agreement. So, whatever is their agreement, we need to follow it. Whatever is the agreement of the partners, we need to follow it. That's under bonus. That's under bonus. Okay. So to 
to understand this, let's have an example. Let's have an example. So let's say A and B decided to form a partnership. A and B decided to form a partnership. A will contribute cash of 900,000 and an inventory with carrying amount of 250,000 but with market value or fair value of 300,000 B will contribute land with book value or carrying amount of 3 million pesos, 3 million pesos. But with fair market value of 3.5 million pesos. The land has an existing mortgage of 600,000 pesos. The partners agree to value the inventory at 400,000 pesos. The partnership will assume the mortgage. Okay. So, ayan siya. A and B decided to form a partnership. A will contribute cash of 900,000 and an inventory with carrying amount of 250,000. But with market value or fair value of 300,000. So, guys, if ever you will, uh, you will have a problem which says market value, fair value, they are the same. B will contribute land with book value or carrying amount. Here naman, book value is the same with carrying amount of 3 million pesos, but with fair market value of 3.5 million. The land has an existing mortgage of 600,000. The partners agree to value their inventory at 400,000. The partnership will assume the mortgage. Okay, so we have your A. What are the contributions of A? We have, first, we have your cash and an inventory. So how do we value the cash at face amount? So we will get 900,000. Next, inventory. Inventory is a property, right? So how do we value your property? First, we value it with your agreed value. If there is no agreed value, market value. If no market value, carrying amount. Okay, so let's find the agreed value of the inventory. So inventory, the partners agree to value the inventory at 400,000. So this is the agreed value. Next, where is the market value? This is the market value of the inventory, 300,000 with market or fair value of 300,000. How about the carrying amount? Where is the carrying amount? 250,000. Question, how do you again value your inventory based on the agreed value? And what is the agreed value of the inventory? 400,000 pesos. Okay, so we're done with A. Those are the contributions of A. How about the contributions of B? The contribution of B is only a land, only a land. Now, for your land, we need to look again for the agreed value. Is there an agreed value of the land? Agreed value of the land. Is there an agreed value of the land? None. Walang sinabing agreed value dito. Next, is the fair market value given? Yes, the fair market value is 3.5 million. So the fair value is 3.5 million. And the carrying amount is 
3 million. So what do we use? If there is no agreed value, we use the fair market value. So how much is the value of the land? 3.5 million pesos. Now, question, how about the mortgage? We have here an existing mortgage. The land has an existing mortgage of 600,000. What did we say regarding liabilities? Liabilities can be carried if ever it is assumed by the partnership. So we look here. Is the mortgage assumed? Yes, sabi dito, the partnership will assume the mortgage. So we will record here mortgage payable. How much? 600,000. So how much is the investment of A? 1.3 million. Investment of B? 2.9 million. 2.9 million. So how do we record this? To record the investment of A, we debit cash 900,000 and then we have your inventory 400,000 and then we have your A capital 1,300,000. And then we go to B. For B, our entry is, I'm sorry, for B, our entry is with debit land 3,500,000. We credit mortgage payable 2 million. I know 600,000 lang pala yung mortgage. 600,000. And then we credit B capital 2,900,000. Okay, so. Here in your net investment, whatever is the contributed capital that is the agreed capital. So what do we do? In your net investment method, ganito siya, net investment. So first, you need to plot the agreed capital, contributed capital, ganyan siya. Agreed capital on the top, contributed capital dun sa baba niya. And then we have your partners, A, B, and total. How much is the contribution of A? The contribution of A is 1.3 million. The contribution of B is 2.9 million. So equal to 4.2 million. Okay. So sabi natin, in your net investment, in your net investment, the total agreed capital, this is the total agreed capital, TEC, this is the total contributed capital, is equal. Also, the total, the partnership contributed capital or the partner contributed capital is equal to partner agreed capital. So this is still 1.3 million and your 2.9 million. So I am no difference, no difference. Less than that. Okay. Total agreed capital and total contributed capital. That's for net investment here. So let's just tweak the problem. Let's just tweak. Tweak the problem. Let's use your bonus method. So under bonus method, let's say, dagdagan natin yung problem. The partners agree. That they will have. An equal capital. The partners agree that they will have an equal capital. So here, let's try your bonus method. So bonus method that I have, agreed capital, contributed capital. So we have your A and B total. So how much is the contribution again of A? 1.3 million. How much is the contribution of B? 2.9 million. So this is 4.2 million. We said under your bonus method, your total contributed capital is equal to your total agreed capital. So this is equal. This is still 4.2 million. And they agree that kailangan equal daw sila ng capital. Equal daw sila ng capital. Anong hati ng 4.2 million? 2.1. So 2.1 dapat yan. Okay? So this is the agreed capital. Kailangan 50-50 sila. 50%, 50%. So 50% of 4.2 million is... 2.1 million. So let's see if there is a bonus to or bonus from. If that is a positive amount, it is bonus to. Bonus to. If that is a negative amount, that is bonus from. Okay. So 
A, 2.1 versus 1.3, how much? We have 800,000, bonus 2. B, we have negative 800,000, bonus from 0. Okay? So there will only be, take note for this, huh? in bonus, there is no additional investment. but only a transfer of capital from one partner to another. So dito, from B to A. From B to A. Kasi from one partner to another. So from B to A. Now, how do we record that? To record the bonus method, you still record the net investment. You still need to record the investment. So net investment. So we just copy this one. We still record this. Yeah. So to record A capital and B capital. Tapos, meron kayong another entry. So your next entry is to record the bonus. There is a transfer from B to A, 800,000. So ang gagawin mo, bawasan mo B capital. 800,000, dagdagan mo si A capital ng 800,000. This is to record the bonus. Okay. So, ayan. Nagbigay na tayo ng example na merong net investment at merong bonus. Kung napapansin ninyo anong difference ang talaga, sabi natin kasi yung total agreed capital and total contributed capital will remain the same. So pansin niyo to, 4.2 pa rin yan. 4.2 pa rin yan. Whether net investment or bonus. And that in your net investment, there will be no increase or decrease on the partner capital. Nasabi na rin natin yan. But in your bonus, there is an increase or decrease in the partner capital due to the bonus to or bonus from. Bonus to if positive, bonus from if negative. So we look here, A and B. We have 800,000 bonus to A and bonus from B, 800,000. So we have another entry to record just the bonus. So i record sa bonus method, anong gagawin natin? I-record muna natin yung investment nila, tapos i-record natin yung bonus nila. Okay? So ganun yung gagawin natin. Nasundan, nasundan. X, Y, and Z decided to create a partnership. X is to contribute cash of 500,000. Y is to contribute inventory and delivery car with market value of 200,000 and 650,000 respectively. So yung inventory, 200,000. Tapos yung delivery car, 650,000. Z is to contribute building with carrying amount of 1 million. The partners agree to value the building at 950,000. First requirement, you record the investment using net investment method. The second requirement, you record the investment using bonus method and the partners agree that their capital must be 30, 30, 40 for X, Y, Z without need of additional investment. Okay, so let's try to answer this one. So let's look for X. What is the amount of contribution of X? So we have a cash contribution amounting to 500,000. Now for Y. Y is to contribute inventory and building. I know. Inventory and delivery car. So what is the fair market value of the inventory? So we have here inventory, market value of 200,000. And then we have here your delivery car, market value of 650,000. Now, question. Is there an agreed value on the inventory and delivery car? None. Therefore, we will make use of the amount of its market value. So inventory, how much? 200,000. Delivery car, 650,000. Now, for Z. For Z, what is the investment of Z or Z? The investment of Z is a... The investment of Z is a building with a carrying amount of 1 million pesos. However, is there an agreed value? Yes. So we use the agreed value, 950,000. So building, 950,000. So if we use requirement 1, 
So if we answer requirement one, we have your X, Y, and Z, and then total. Agreed capital, contributed capital. What's the contributed capital of X? 500,000. For Y, 200 plus 650, we have 850,000. For Z, we have 950,000. So total, 2.3 million. 2.3 million. Okay. So we said that the agreed capital and the contributed capital of the partners are equal for your net investment method. So this is still 500, this is still 850, and this is still 950,000. So zero, 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 zero. So no bonus to or bonus from. So how do we record under your net investment? We just record the investments of the different partners. So for X, we debit cash, credit X capital, amounting to 500,000. For Y, we debit inventory, and then we debit delivery car, credit Y capital, amounting to 850,000, 200,000 for inventory, and 650 for delivery car. And then for Z, we debit building, we credit Z capital, amounting to 950,000. Okay, so net investment method. How about bonus method, requirement two? Bonus method. So we have here agreed capital, contributed capital, X, Y, and Z. Total. So we have here 2.3 million pesos. So how much is the contributed capital of X again? 500,000. For Y, 850,000. For Z, 950,000. So this total contributed capital and agreed capital is equal for bonus method. So this is still 2.3 million pesos. 2.3 million pesos. Now, we need to get for the agreed capital of each partner. So we go back to the problem. Ang sabi dyan, we record the investment using bonus method and the partners agree that their capital must be 30, 30, 40 for X, Y, Z. So we have 30% for X, 30% for Y, and 40% for Z. Okay? So kindly compute for the 30% of X, 30% of Y, and 30% of Z. 40% uh, of Z. So we have here 690, 690. And then we have here 920,000. So let's see if there is a bonus to or bonus from. So how much is the bonus? 2x190. From y, how much? We have 160,000. From z, we have 30,000. And this is zero. So there is a bonus to x190. Bonus from y, 160. And from z, 130. Okay. So how do we record that? To record it, first, you need to record the investments of the partners. So, kopihin ulit natin to. Ayan. Yan muna, investment of the partners. After investment of the partners, we record the bonus. To record the bonus. Babawasan natin si Y capital na magkano? 160,000. Babawasan natin si Z capital na magkano? 30,000. Tapos dadagdagan natin si X capital na 190,000. Okay? So 160, 30, and 190,000. So yan. Bonus and net investment method for your individuals who will contribute to the partnership. Okay. So we're done talking about the... Uh, Formation of a partnership, if ever it is formed by individuals. Now, we go with your formation of a partnership, if ever it is formed by sole proprietorship business. Sole proprietorship business. Okay. So, let's say we have these two business. So, let's have A and B. 
A and B. So just write down the amount of the uh, assets and liabilities and equity of each sole proprietorship business. So. Okay, so this is the statement of financial position of the two sole proprietorship business. You have here your A, business of A, and business of B. So, and lahat yung values niya. Now, we are only, we need to just uh, adjust them based on their agreement. So, here are the agreement. So, as to AR of A and B, sabi natin, uh, 80,000 na lang yan. Tapos, this one is 105,000. And then, inventories. Okay. And uh, let's say all liabilities are, of course, assumed by the partnership. So, tandanya, it is always assumed for your sole proprietorship businesses, unless guys sinabi na hindi ya assume ng partnership. So, again, A and B, we have here your sole proprietorship business, and then we have the, here your agreement wherein we need to adjust it to their capital. So whenever you need to adjust, you adjust it to their capital. Okay, so let's first adjust the books of A. Adjustments. So remember, first we need to adjust the account. So how do we value the uh, sole proprietorship business? We need to adjust first the account. So in adjusting the accounts, you look as to their adjustments. So first adjustments of A. First adjustment of A. The AR is 80,000. How much AR do we have here? How much AR? We have AR of 100,000. The AR should only be at 80,000. 80,000. So what do we do? We need to decrease the AR by what amount? 20,000. So whenever you decrease the AR, of course, you need to credit it. Accounts receivable, we need to credit the AR because we need to decrease. At what amount? 100,000 less 80,000. 20,000. And then any adjustment should be made on A capital. So A capital debit 20,000. Now, next, we need to adjust for B, we need to adjust the inventory. So inventory, uh, for A, we need to adjust again the inventory. It will be 60,000. So the inventory per the SFP of A is 75. 
we need to adjust it again from 75 to 60,000. So, anong gagawin natin? Babawasan natin yung inventory. So, we credit inventory. At what amount? So, we have here 75,000 recorded. It must only be 60,000. So, bawasan natin ng 15,000. So, lahat ng bawas natin, sa capital yung effect niya. Next, the equipment. The equipment now will be worth 150,000. Let's look at studio equipment. So, ito yung equipment natin, right? 250 less 185,000. The value is 65,000. 65,000. So, what do we do? We need to increase it and make it as 150. Diba? 250 less 185, the book value is 65,000. We need to make it at 150. So, what do we do? We have here 150 less 65,000. We need to increase it by 85,000, right? So, to increase that, you rather uh, decrease the accumulated depreciation. So, what do we do? Pawasan yung accumulated depreciation ng 85,000, diba? 150 less 65,000 is 85,000. And then, we credit that to A capital. We credit that to A capital at 85,000. Okay? So, we're done adjusting the books of A. So, we just adjusted them based on the agreement. Paano uli pag walang agreement? E di kung ano na yung book value. So, kung ano yung AP, accrued expenses, notes payable, at saka kung ano yung mga nandyan na natira, yun na yung value niya. Kung walang agreed, nasusundan. Di ba sabi naman natin, first agreement. Next, fair value. Pag wala na yung dalawa, edi book value. So, kung book value ng mga nandyan, yun na siya. Clear? Okay. So, we're done with A. Palitin lang natin yung uh, ating adjustments kasi para magkasya yung kay B. Sorry. So, that's for A. Let's go to B. So, for B capital, guys, what we do is we need to adjust also for B. So, for B, we start with your AR. So, the AR of B is 105. So, this is 110. So, we need to decrease it by 5,000. Tama? 110 versus 15. So, what do we do? B capital. And then... Accounts receivable, how much? 110 less 105,000. So we have here 5,000. Next, we have your inventories. So inventory of B is 100, should be 100, but it is recorded at 85. So nung gagawin natin? Will we increase or will we decrease? We will increase. So by increasing, we debit the inventory. We need to increase the inventory, so we debit the inventory amounting to 100 less 85, so 15,000. 15,000, so that is equal to 100 less 85,000. And then lastly, we need to record the change as to your equipment. So what is the value of our equipment? 180,000. 180,000. And here, what is the book value? 300 versus 100. We only have 200. So will we increase the equipment or will we decrease it? We will increase. So if you... Uh, no, we will decrease. Kasi nga, from 200 to 180. Mababawasan siya ng 20,000. So if we will decrease the equipment, what should we do? We also decrease the capital. So B capital... And then, we add accumulated depreciation. We add accumulated depreciation amounting to 20,000. That is 200 less 180. 20,000. Okay. So, we're done now in adjusting the books of the sole proprietorship. So, after adjusting the books of the sole proprietorship, what is the next? We close the books. Okay. We close the books. So, how do we close the books? Ang gagawin ninyo, kailangan tanggalin nyo lahat ng accounts. So, ang gagawin natin, tanggalin natin yung A capital. 
Tanggalin mo yung accounts, payable. Tanggalin mo yung accrued expenses. Tanggalin mo yung notes, payable. Tanggalin mo yung accumulated depreciation. And then, tanggalin mo yung cash. Tanggalin mo yung AR. Tanggalin mo yung inventory. Tanggalin mo rin yung equipment. So, we need to zero out the whole books. So, to close the books means to zero out the whole book. So, what do we need to do first? We remove the cash. How much is the cash? So, tanggalin na natin yung cash, ha? So, 50,000 yan. Next, tanggalin natin yung AR. What is the adjusted AR? 80,000 na lang, di ba? So, tanggalin na rin natin yan. What is the adjusted inventory? 60,000. Tanggalin na rin natin yan. Tanggalin natin yung book value ng equipment na 250,000. Next, Accounts payable, tanggalin na rin natin, 65,000. Tanggalin yung accrued expenses, 55,000. Tanggalin yung note payable, 80,000. Next, for the accumulated depreciation, una 185 siya, tama? 185. Tapos, ang ginawa natin, binawasan natin siya ng 85,000. Binawasan natin siya ng 85,000. So, 185 less 85, we have 100,000. 100, Next, for A capital, so, kumbitin natin yung A capital. Ang A capital natin nung una ay 90,000. Tama? 90. Tapos, we debit A capital for 20,000. So, bawasan natin ng 20 yan. And then, we debit A capital again at 15,000. Bawasan natin ng 15. Tapos, we increase it by 85,000. So, what is the adjusted capital? So, 90 less 20 less 15 plus 85,000. So, 140,000. 140,000. So, let's see if ever equal yung debits and credits natin. So, 140,000 plus 65 plus 55,000 plus 80,000 plus 100,000. We have here 440,000. 440. So, let's see if ever our credit is also 440. 50,000 plus 80,000, plus 60,000, plus 250,000, so 440 rin yan. Okay? So, tama na yung ating pag-close sa books ni A. So, how about if we close the books of B? So, if we close the books of B, same lang naman lahat ng entries natin, tama? Same lang yung entries natin. Pero, syempre, hindi A capital ang gagamitin natin. Ang gagamitin natin ay B capital. So, tanggalin natin ito. Gawin natin B capital. Okay. So, what do we do first? We we remove the accounts payable, 75,000. We remove the accrued expenses, 90,000. We remove the notes payable, 100,000. And then, we go with your cash. How much is your cash? 30,000. How much is the agreed value of your AR? It must be 105,000. How much is the agreed value of your inventories? 100,000. What is the value of your equipment per book? It is 300,000. So this will be 300,000. Now we go with your accumulated depreciation. Our accumulated depreciation is 100,000 initially. Ayan siya. And then what did we do? We increased it by 20,000. So 100 plus 20, 120. 120. Now, we go with your capital adjustment. We go with your capital adjustment. So, initially, B capital is 160. We increase it by, I would decrease it by 5,000. We increase it by 15,000. And we decrease it again by 20,000. So, 160,000 plus 5,000 less 15,000. Eh, no. 160,000 less 5,000 plus 15,000 less 20,000 will give us 150,000. 150,000. Now, after your adjustments, diba? after your adjustments, what did we do? We close the books. Ngayon naman, if ever, we will make the entry. So, investment in the partnership. Pagka mag-invest naman na, ang gagawin mo, you just need to reverse everything. Reverse everything. So, pag i-reverse everything natin yan, ang gagawin lang natin, we debit cash, we debit AR, we debit inventory, we debit equipment. And then, we credit uh, accounts payable, accrued expenses, 
uh, notes payable, accumulated depreciation, and your capital. So, ganun lang. Okay? So, napansin niyo yung step, ha? First, we need to adjust it based on the agreement. If there is no agreement, how do we adjust it? We adjust it based on the market value. And then, after adjustment, what we do is we close the books. We close the books. After we close the books, we record the investment. So, ang bago lang dito actually is yung adjustment. Ito yung bago. Yung adjustment, this one, this area, and then the closing of the books. So, after you adjust and you close the books, then you can already record the investment. Okay? So, just uh, beware of adjusting. Doon naman normally nagkakamali yung mga estudyante on how to properly adjust the books. On how to properly adjust the books. So, nagkakamali sila doon sa pag-adjust ng books. Okay? So, mag-ingat kayo whether to increase or decrease. Tignan nyo lang yung effect niya. If ever, we will increase the account or we will decrease the account. After that, we close the books. How do we close the books? Lahat ng nakakredit initially, i-debit mo. Lahat ng nakadebit initially, i-credit mo. Kasi nga kailangan mong i-zero out. Closing means you zero out. So we need to zero out everything. All the assets, the liabilities, and the equity. After that, we record the investment. Okay. So kung net investment method yan, if that is net investment method, how much is the investment of A and how much is the investment of B? Di ba na-compute na natin magkano investment ni A? A capital S, 140. B capital S, 150. O, ganun lang uli siya. So, after mong malaman yung net investment niya, pwede mo siyang i-account uli either at your net investment method or at your bonus method. So, net investment is also known as your contribution. Okay? So, same lang, same lang. Ang bago lang talaga is yung adjustments. Yung adjustments naman, hindi natin niya matuturo kung paano. Basta pinakita ko sa inyo kung paano mag-adjust, ang kailangan ninyong gawin dito is alamin kung mag increase siya or mag-decrease siya. Pag mag increase siya, ang gagawin mo, of course, madadagdagan yung capital. Pero pag nag-decrease siya, lalo na kung asset yan, mababawasan yung capital. As you can see on your adjustments. And on your closing, madali na lang yan. Pag tama yung inyong adjustments. How do we close the books again? We just need to zero out everything. We zero out the asset, we zero out the liabilities, we zero out the equity. Okay. Sir, how about if ever that is a sole proprietor and an individual? So we're done with a purely individual. We had an example of all sole proprietor. What if individual and sole proprietor? So the rules on your individual, you follow. The rules on your sole proprietor, you follow. What are the rules on your individual? You just value and you record or account for the investment. For sole proprietor, you need to adjust first based on the valuation. You close the books and then you record the investment. Ganun lang. Okay? So, pag nagsama naman si individual at si sole proprietor, you follow the rules for each and then you just record it in the books of the partnership. You record it in the books of the partnership. Okay. Last topic for your formation. Our last topic for formation is in case we need to compute for the amount of the investment of one partner. Computation of the investment of one partner. Okay. So if we try to compute for the investment of the one partner, we base it on your agreed capital. We base it on your agreed capital. And how do we compute for your agreed capital? It is based on the amount contribution, amount of the contribution of one partner, and we divide it to the agreed capital of that partner. So we assume that the known investment of one partner is the agreed capital, is the agreed capital. So for example, a and B decided to form a partnership. A invested cash of 900,000 representing 40% uh -huh, of the capital. 
be invested 700,000 cash. It is agreed that B must invest additional cash to have the 40% interest, right, to have 60% interest, to have the 60% interest in the capital. Okay, so computation of the investment of one partner. So here, we need to know how much is the additional investment of the one partner. So A and B decided to form a partnership. A invested cash of 900,000 representing 40% capital. And then B invested 700,000 cash, okay? So B invested 700,000 cash. And he must still invest additional cash to have 60% interest of the capital. So sabi ko nga dito, you need to know first the total agreed capital. You need to know first the total agreed capital. The total agreed capital is the amount of the contributed capital divided by the interest. So this is equal to your contributed capital divided by your interest of the partner with fixed contribution. So dito, sino yung may fix? Si A, di ba? Kasi nga, 900,000, 40% na yan. Bakit hindi fix yung kay B? Kasi it is agreed that B will invest the additional cash. So si B yung hindi fix. And then, after mong kunin yung total agreed capital, ang gagawin mo, to compute for your additional investment, it is equal to your total agreed capital multiplied by the interest of the partner who will invest. Less the amount of previous investment. Okay. So let's try. A and B decided to form a partnership. A invested cash of 900,000 representing 40% of the capital. B invested 700,000 cash. It is agreed that B must invest additional cash to have 60% interest. So first, we need to compute for your total agreed capital. So contributed capital divided by the percentage of the partner with fixed contribution. So who has the fixed contribution here? A. Kasi si B yung mag invest So si A yung may fixed na contribution. So magkano contribution niya? 900,000. Magkano yung interest niya? 40%. So 900,000 times uh, divided by 40% is equal to 2,250,000. Okay? Next to compute for your additional investment, we have your total agreed capital of 2,250,000 multiplied by the interest of the partner who will invest. So ano yung interest ni B na mag invest 60%. Multiplied, uh, no, we deduct the amount of the previous investment of the partner. So B invested previously 700,000. So what is the additional? So 2.25 million times 60% plus 700,000. How much is the additional investment? 650,000. So in case you are asked how much is the additional investment, ganito yung pagcompute. Ha? Total agreed capital is equal to your capital contributed divided by the interest of the partner with fixed investment. And then, to compute for the additional investment, after we compute the total agreed capital, we multiply it to the interest of the partner who will invest and the amount of the previous investment. So, our additional investment here is 650000 So, tignan natin. Okay? So, if we record here A, we record it as debit to cash and credit to A capital. So, how much? 900,000. And then to record for B, we debit cash, we credit B capital. Magkano unang investment niya? 700,000. And then meron siyang additional, di ba? Na, uh, na 650,000. So we have your cash, B capital ule, additional investment of 650,000. So this will give us 
1.35 million. So let's check if that is 1.35 million really. So our TAC or total agreed capital is 2 million 250 thousand. We multiply it to the interest of 60%. Will that give us 1.35? Yes. Okay. So ang gagawin lang natin dito ah. Pagka tinanong sa inyo how much is the additional investment, kailangan yung fixed capital or yung fixed portion, yun yung gagamitin ninyo. Okay? Sir, paano naman pagkatatlo? So let's say X, Y, Z decided to form partnership. X and Y contributed 500,000 each. 500,000 each. Z will contribute cash to represent sixty percent interest in the capital. How much must Z invest? Okay, XYZ, XYZ decided to form partnerships. X and Y contributed 500,000 each. Z will contribute cash represents, to represent 60% interest in the capital. How much Z invest? How much Z must invest? How much must Z invest? Okay, so first we compute for your total agreed capital. Sino mag invest Si Z. Who will invest? Who will invest? C, Z. So, sino yung may fixed capital? C, X, at saka Y. So, how much is yung fixed capital ni X and Y? 500,000 each. So, 500,000 times 2. Anong interest nila? Magkano yung interest ni Z? 60% yung interest ni Z, no? Z, sabi dito, Z will contribute to represent 60% interest. If the interest of Z is 60%, magkano yung matitira kay X and Y. So kung 100% yan, ibawas mo yung 60% kay Z. So we have here, 1 million over 40%. So what is the total agreed capital? 2.5 million. Next, to compute for your investment or your additional investment that is equal to your total agreed capital multiplied by the percentage of interest less the previous investment. So sino yung mag invest Z. So the investment of Z, total agreed capital is 2.5 million. What is the interest of Z? 60%. Do we have any previous investment? None. So how much is the investment of Z? 2.5 times 60%, 1.5 million. 1.5 million. So same pa rin, same pa rin. Tandaan niyo kung sino man yung mag invest at kung sino yung may fix ng investment. So dito, si Z yung mag invest yung fixed investment kay X and Y. So, sila yun nandito sa TEC natin. Paano natin kinuha yung percentage niyan? Always kasi na 100% ang capital. So, kung may 60% si Z, si Z ay may 60%, magkano yung matitira kay X and Y? It is 40%. So, yan. Yan siya. Okay? Another example. Last one. Uh, D, E, F, Form a partnership. D invested 300,000 for 20% interest. E invested 350,000 for 30% interest F invested 400,000 for 50% interest it is agreed that F will invest additional amount D 
DEF formed a partnership. They invested three hundred thousand for twenty percent interest. He invested three fifty thousand for thirty percent interest. F invested forty four hundred thousand for fifty percent interest. It is agreed that F will invest additional amount. What is the additional investment? Okay. So the first step, compute for your total agreed capital. So that is your contributed capital divided by your percentage of the fix. Sino yung fix? Yung fix yung hindi mag-invest, not invest. Okay, sino yung hindi na mag invest So sabi kasi dito, F lang yung mag invest for the additional amount. F lang yung mag invest for the additional amount. Therefore, guys, CD at saka CE fix na yan. CD at saka E sila na yung fix. So, how much is the contributed capital of D? 300,000. Contributed capital of E? 350,000. And then, we have the percentage of D. 20%. Percentage of E? 30%. So, we have here, 650,000 divided by 50%. We have 1.3 million. And then we need to compute for the additional investment. We need to compute for the additional investment. So first, we get for the TEC, 1.3 million. We multiply it to the interest of F, that is 50%. Less the previous interest or previous investment of 400,000. So 1.3 million times 50%. Less 400,000. How much is the additional investment? 250,000. 250,000. Okay. So, uh, ganyan siya. Sir, pwede ba namang mag-withdraw din? Pwede bang mag-withdraw din? Pwede rin. Pwede rin. Okay. So, let's have an example na mag-withdraw naman siya. Withdraw instead of additional. So, copy natin to para... para mas madali. Yan, copy lang natin yung example natin. So, DEF formed a partnership. DEF formed a partnership. D invested 300,000 for 20% interest. E invested 350,000 for 30% interest. F invested 800,000 for 50% interest. It is agreed that F will withdraw additional amount, will withdraw the excess investment. What is the withdrawal? What is the amount of withdrawal? Okay. Dito naman kasi ang tinatanong ay mag-withdraw. Pero still, sino yung fix? Si D at saka si E. Kasi ang babawasan lang daw naman natin ay C, F. So ang gagawin natin, we compute again for your total agreed capital. So how much is the capital contributed of the fix? CD, 300. CE, 350. Tapos, ano yung interest ni D? 20%. Ano yung interest ni E? 30%. So we have 300,000 plus 350,000 divided by 0.5. So we have 1.3 million. And then, we need to compute for the amount of your withdrawal. So for the amount of your withdrawal, it's still the same way how to compute. So we have your TEC multiplied by your percentage less your previous investment. So what is the TEC? 1.3 million. What is the percentage? 50%. What is the previous investment of F? 800,000. So 1.3 million times 0 0.5 less 800,000. What is the amount of withdrawal? 150,000. So this is the additional withdrawal. Okay? So pwede ninyong gamitin to to compute for the additional withdrawal or pwede ninyong gamitin to compute for your additional investment. Okay? So first, you just need to know who needs to have additional investment or who needs an additional withdrawal. And then you compute for your total agreed capital and the withdrawal or the additional investment in case. Okay? 
So that wraps up our topic, our session for today in your partnership formation. So we learned how to account for your partnership formation, particularly net investment method and bonus method, if ever the partners are purely individuals or two businesses or a combination of your individual and businesses. Further, we also talk in case you need to uh, answer questions in which you need to know how much is the amount of your investment. So we just follow a general formula by knowing first the total agreed capital, and then we compute for the amount of your additional investment or your withdrawal. So you just follow the rules, uh, guys. Do not forget the rules on how do we value for your individuals and for your businesses. Okay, that's it. Thank you.